welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and uh, this is the annual roundup of all the costs for the year of 2023 for all the cars in the collection and also the restoration costs and that sort of thing. There isn't one sort of star car that's just come back for restoration unlike last year when that Zagato had just literally been finished, the paint was still wet and it arrived up here this time last year. This time they're all in the garage here, they're all running and it's all good news basically. You will notice regular viewers that the F40 and F50 have departed the garage. That's because I just wanted to get my cars in here all together. There are going to be videos on these cars. We've had two aborted goes at trying to get a video on them. The weather this year has been awful for those sort of cars, particularly in October, November and obviously December, but they don't really run on the road in December. Uh, so apologies for not getting those videos, but they will happen at some point. Well, let's crack on and see what it's cost to run these cars in 2023. I'm going to start this side and not much to say about the Honda CBX. Very few runs this year. It starts on the button. It's all good. So really, Lotus Amira. Now, this car, you'll notice it's not the cleanest example because this is the car I tend to use at this time of year out of all the cars in the garage rather than the summer. In the summer, I use the cars that I can't use in the winter. Weirdly, my Lotus Amira is my winter sports car and it's something it does very well. And it has just had its first service up at Lotus Silverstone. Absolutely normal service. I complained about a slightly squeaky seat. They're investigating that and it's probably going to replace the seat, which seems a bit odd, but that's what they wanted to do. It's had all the updates done on it. There were some recalls on the wipers. If you remember, they had that weird thing of not speeding up when you wanted them to, when it was really raining very hard. That is a, a motor. They had to actually change the wiper motor because it's an internal uh, software issue in it and it wasn't able to update. It seems crazy, but there you go. There was a seat belt change because they would lock on a slope, that sort of thing. But a straightforward service on it. Now, when I bought this car, I actually bought the three year service package, which was, I think, £1,400. I noticed it's gone up a little bit since I bought it. And the service would have cost £430, but it was just done as part of the service package. Not much to report on it. I think I've uh, it's on about six, 7,000 miles on it, but it will pile on some miles as time goes on. I still think it looks super sharp, um, the design of this car, and I love this colour, this Nimbus grey that has this sort of bronze champagne tint to it. So very happy to continue with that, and you'll see it out and about on the roads over the next few months. Project 8. Well, again, it's been a bit grubby. It's very hard to keep cars clean at this time of year. It hasn't done a huge amount. I suppose its big thing this year was doing that sprint down at Goodwood and it's had a few other runs out. Oh, I just did something with Drive Tribe actually. Richard gave me a call. He said, just turn up at the airfield. There's uh, Mike down there. It was Auto Alex there with his XJ that they've both been tweaking these Jaguars and they're going to have a sort of run down a uh, runway who had the fastest Jaguar I rocked up in the project eight and slightly spoiled the part if you want to see that video I'll put a link up there uh, it had that suspension work new tires on it and it was also had a service in 2023 what was that 348 pounds for the service on the project eight crazy cheap we come to the project seven as well um, it hasn't done a huge amount of miles, probably eight, nine hundred miles this year. It hasn't really had the year for it. And I'm, I, 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 do, I don't really do track days. Uh, I keep kicking myself. I should do more. And that would be the choice of car. So, yeah, we'll see what we do in 2024 with it. Project 7. Well, it's a bit of a sad story because, again, the weather has intervened and we've hardly used this car. This car has only done 200 and something miles this year. Charlie's behind the camera, took it to Goodwood Revival. Uh, I did a run, local run in it. That is the only miles this car has done this year, which is just shocking. Uh, it's had a service as well, uh, 763 pounds, so an expensive service, which was diff oil change and brake fluid change as well. Hopefully we have a better 2024 with it. It is one of the favourite cars in the garage, but again, whether when I've been in the UK and I could have used it, it's been chucking down a rain, so I haven't used it and I'm gutted about it. Ah, now then, 
the Jaguar XJ Coupe V12 manual. Ah, this was a bit of a star of the 22 roundup because we were having those injection issues and we thought we'd cured it by fitting new injectors to it. We hadn't. It still had a misfire and there were other elements of it. And Tom Lentful had always told me he hates running those old injector systems. He wanted to put an Emerald ECU on it, use a modern injector rail in it, and replace the inlet manifolds that I had on it, which were modified in period, for ones off the six litre XJS engines, the last run of the V12 in, when a standard in Jaguar form. He does a modification of those. I'd had such enough of this nonsense of not having this Jaguar being able to run properly that this year we did it. And we spent quite a lot on the Jaguar getting it right. It's around £12,000 to have that new injection system put on it and the Emerald ECU and the setup rolling road. And we also put the bigger throttle bodies that were on it, we put those on it. But when we put it on, did that power run with it and saw the horsepower it's producing, it all became worthwhile and while it was up and having that work done one thing i had noticed during the rebuild it had come back the gearbox wasn't perfect there was a bit of a whine in second gear and the synchro mesh was going so i thought do you know what while this engine is out they're doing all this work on it let's rebuild the gearbox so it had a gearbox rebuild as well and now it's turnkey uh, I should mention the wipers. Yeah, if you saw my trip to Northern Ireland, you notice the wipers packed up. Infuriating. Rainex got us out of jail and we got home. It turns out that there's a cable that goes and powers these up. And the wiper motor is not under the dash, actually. It's in the wing here. You have to take the battery out on it. That exposes where the wiper motor is. And basically, on the wiper motor, the cable that powers the wipers is held on by a bolt and you tighten it up against the cable to make the cable not move and that nut had come loose all it needed was that tightening up i now have wipers on it fixed so, so on the jaguar we a gearbox rebuild uh, noisy because of the noisy synchro mesh we did actually a, a speedo calibration recalibration had that done there was a brake fluid leak wind noise issues suspension knock we just changed the mounts on the front all in all with the injection change nineteen thousand and four pounds was spent on the xj coupe but i now have a turnkey v12 manual in this wonderful green and it's terrific so you'll see more of that car in 2024 now rolls royce silver shadow my dear arctic rolls that took us all the way up to the arctic back in 2018 zero cost for this car this year hasn't done a huge amount of miles but i can assure you it's one of the firm favorites in this garage there is no other sensation going down the road than in a silver shadow people say oh my car rides really well or new cars they, they describe how good the ride is but they've never driven a silver shadow with new dampers and things on it um zero cost as i say and i've got a dilemma with this car because it's super smart as you can see and i used to take it into london occasionally taking cars into london central london is no longer fun in any way all with the 20 mile an hour all the cameras everywhere all the congestion charges ules it's ules free i suppose because it's congestion charge but you are queuing in traffic for a lot of the time and the one thing i've noticed on this since it's all done like this and it's lovely if i have to sit in traffic for 15 minutes or something and it's on tick over and you're just inching forward you can notice odd puffs of blue smoke from it and i've got this dilemma do i rebuild the engine just for this slight bit of oil burning or not it would be five six thousand pounds to do do i put a different engine in it but this has got the six and a quarter engine in it i can get a six and three quarter engine put in it for about three thousand pounds so i've got this moral dilemma or do i just run it around locally here and it's absolutely fine it doesn't really burn oil that you can see it does use some oil so yeah that's the story on the on the shad and i'm also tempted to perhaps change the tires away from these winter tires and put some new Pirelli Cinturatos on it that are now available in the correct size P2 
period reproduced tyres. So maybe some things on the Silver Shadow, but as I say, it's a firm favourite in the garage. Another firm favourite in the garage is obviously the Ferrari Testarossa. And this had some work in 2023, as I'm sure you followed. It went down to prestige refinishing. And look at all the shut lines here. Unfortunately, I've got the bonnet open at the moment because I've got um, a CTEC charger in it. All the cars sit on CTEC chargers. It just makes life so much easier. What I find when you, with putting cars on trickle charge, you're tempted not to put it on when you park it up in the garage. You think, oh, I'll be out in it tomorrow. And then you're not out in it tomorrow and then you come back to it after a month and, it, and the battery's gone flat so my top tip is just automatically plug it in just have a charger by your car when you come in put the CTEC charger on and life is so much easier anyway getting back to this it had a lot of work it ha obviously had the body done and it also had the engine uh, sort of uh, cam belts done the engine came out and we painted the cam covers we did quite a lot of work if I look at the invoice it was at Foskers who are near Brands Hatch they did all the work on it and it's at several pages on the invoice the the key things was uh, obviously cam belt change they did air conditioning on it but on the engine it's the uh, cam timing was discovered to be one tooth out and also the, the valve clearance, which is a complete pain to do on the tester also because it's a four valve head. So you've got 48 valves and you have to adjust each one with shims. There's a lot of hours in that work and they've done it to this and this car has never run as well as it does now. But uh, the invoice for all the engine work on it was £10,773. If I just had the cam belts done on it, it would probably have been around the £5,000 work. But I just felt it was worth getting it absolutely right. And it is absolutely right to go with the bodywork. Now, the bodywork, um, I asked Sam, you know, going through the invoice with that, it wasn't, because I was trying to use Adrian and Adrian's part time on it, uh, it, it looked like there was a lot of work on it, but it wasn't that bad. It was about 78 hours on it. And the cost for the bodywork, uh, was £5,800. So in all, that £16,500 went into the Testarossa and you see it now and it's never been better. Nor the same story with the Countach as well. That has never run as well as it does now. Obviously it was absent this time last year. It wasn't in the garage because it was up at Ian Tyrrell's and we were doing the, basically the gearbox on it. And then we discovered there's some um, sort of low compression readings on some of the cylinders because some of the valve seats had gone as well. So engine and gearbox completely done. Now, I also, because we were going deep into it, I thought, do you know what? I'd owned this car for 10 years and I just felt while it was up there, being stripped down, it was over winter, and I get everything done. I went through the suspension. I went, did all the brakes on it. We did that colonizing inside on the lever. And that first drive in that, this car, when it was all back, all done, was just transformed. And I've used it a few times since. It's an angry, fast car, a healthy Countach. It's something else. The suspension of all those rose joints is often not in the um, best of health when you go and drive one. This one, absolutely bang on and i have big plans for this for 2024 you will not be surprised to hear that it was quite expensive all that work it's up there for some time and the total bill for all the work on this car 65,256 pounds that is the big spend in 2023 but i felt kuntash values have really increased recently um, and I felt it was worthwhile spending the money to have a super fit contest. I don't regret it for a moment. Yeah, talking about costs of cars and values, uh, the insurance, Footman Janes, as you know, have always done the fleet policy in here, and they've done it again for this year. It renews every August. If I look for the cost for the next year, £7,732. Um, that's for 22 cars and 13 bikes. Madness. I discussed with them whether I ought to have agreed value on the cars or market value. And it was quite an interesting discussion because if you go for agreed value, 
that is the value you get paid out on whatever happens and you've got to watch what the market's doing really to make sure your agreed value is the right value if you go for market value my concern was i've just had these cars restored so they're perhaps above market value but they say well you there is a discussion on market value and if you can show that you've spent money on restorations then that is the money you get paid out. So market value is quite good because you're looking at what actually has sold recently and that is how they arrange at that price. And there is a discussion on the sort of value of cars every time. So it's not just a number that were just sent out and you can't actually argue the case. So I've actually stuck with market value with Footman James because it's just easier when you've got a great fleet of cars to, rather than trying to agree certain values or well, that ones are worth a bit more or not because I've just had it restored. Now, Porsche 930 Yes. It's another car that has been a bit of a casualty of the weather this year. We've had a plan to visit Germany. There's a number of things we're going to line up to visit in Germany. And the key one we're going to do, oh, we're still waiting for the green light to do it. And very frustratingly, it didn't happen in 23. But I'm going to determine to make it happen in 2024. So that's why you haven't seen much of this car in during 2023. 930s also featured in a total 911 even made the cover of their subscription copy i'm very grateful for carl fortune for arranging the test and a great write-up i haven't actually spent anything on it because it was serviced last year it hasn't done very many miles since then i'm going to have it serviced over the winter it'll go off to steve winter at jazz porsche in a few weeks time and they'll run through it nothing to report on the mechanically side it's absolutely on the button always starts up but it will feature more in 2024 as i hope the lamborghini espada will as well ah 23 was going to be a good year for this car and then we were constantly having those ignition issues with it and i went off to the hevingham hall concour wonderful event out in suffolk uh, and it then stopped. We had all that thing with the rotor arms and it is just this issue with these new parts coming through that are just not up to quality. I didn't want to go back to the point standard system. It, this, the distributor on these have four sets of points. And if you know about points, they're a nightmare to set up. They were okay in period because they were better quality points, but when we're using the new points, I just don't trust them. What we've ended up doing Luminition ignition has gone on this, two little amplifiers on it. I've had it on the Lotus Elan, I fitted it in 1993. I've never touched it since. I don't know why I didn't think of it before. This now on Luminition ignition starts on the button, no misfires, no nothing. So I have finally a working Espada. The only thing we've noticed, we think it's running a little rich, so I'm just investigating whether I change the jets on it. Um, but that will be continued in another report. But basically, I have a perfectly healthy Espada. And because there were issues basically with the um, distributor, it hasn't actually cost any money. Ian Tyrrell's taking it on the chin. He's trying to get the car sorted. And I'm very grateful for that. Ah, now, the car, the, almost the car that's done the most miles this year is the Lancia Fulvia Zagato, which had the most amazing 2023 it got voted that Concord winner was in it London Concours that back in June. It was it won its class there. It got a finalist for the REC Club. We went down there alongside Lord Bamford and this other amazing car that all got judged up at Vista Heritage. This has been basically turnkey fantastic since it arrived. I did have a first service on it after 500, 600 miles. There was a few things they had to just adjust just on it tailgate motor wasn't uh, quite behaving it had a rolling road session but not a full-on engine setup one it'll probably have another one of those whole load of oil, all the fluid chains all sorts of things so i have actually spent on the zagato 3523 pounds this year but it has also done near as damn it 2000 miles this year so I think out of all the cars, it's the Zagato that I've just, you know, we'll just take the Zag out. It's just turnkey and just wonderful to have a car back from rebuild, utterly perfect and drives terrific. It's just an exciting car. So we'll be doing more of that as well. Now, my other winter car, and this is if I have a classic I use in the winter, then it's the Lotus Alain, hence it's a little bit muddy on the side. I don't take it out on horrible, salty roads and it's 
pouring of rain at the moment. I wouldn't take it on a day like that. But with the odd sunny day or something, it's the lotus of land that I just go out in. I spray uh, all that ACF um, 80 underneath so it's all protected. And I have no hesitation in using this during all the grime. Hasn't actually had a service this year. I'll probably do a service next year. I've owned it for 30 something years, so, and I just love, I can just start and use it. Interestingly, um, Lotus Silverstone mentioned that they service classic Lotus as well as modern cars, modern Lotus like the Amira. So it might well go for a visit there, because there's one thing I'd like to sort on it is an electric fuel pump. It just seems, it takes a lot of cranking. If I've left it for a month or so and not used it, I'm cranking away to get petrol due to the carburettors. And I'd much rather that was being done by an electric fuel pump rather than a mechanical pump. But that's by the by, that, we might do that. And I brought the um, Yaris in, the GR Yaris. So this arrived March 21. And basically Charlie uses as his main car running around. I use it very occasionally. And it's still huge fun. I think it's one of those cars that has completely changed our complexion of Toyota and this fun car, how it works. It's a, a modern day integral is how Charlie and I sort of look at this car. Had the Litchfield suspension put on it and the only fault we can find this car is a little bit of a rattle from the rear. So I'm going to take it up to Ian Litchfield's and just have that checked out. It's just had a service on it. Uh, 6,000 miles service is about what it's done in the last year. That was £250. We've got a slight discount because when it came back last year from service, the fans weren't coming on, the engine cooling fans, and they'd left the plug off. And um, as compensation, they locked £50 off the service for this year. The other issue we're having with the GRE Aris is tyres. We'd really like to replace the front, uh, the Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S's, and there aren't any um, they're sort of on back order we think we've located two tires but we ordered them a week ago and there's no more news on them the wheels on a GR Yaris are also two thousand pounds each these forged wheels and so therefore Toyota main dealers don't like fitting them because they're scared of damaging the wheel so yeah tires on GR Yaris are a complete pain and I've brought our L322 Range Rover in there's a big fan base for this car it seems on YouTube it's just had a service down at Marshalls in Abingdon and it's the last service stamp in the book we have a fully stamped service book at main dealer service on this car it's about 127,000 miles on it fairly straightforward service so I just thought I'd bring that in just because it features on Harry's garage quite regularly um, the thing about this you just got to watch is this little rust area here so that's something I'm keeping an eye on if you're looking at buying a 322 always open the door and just check if you can see any rust appearing on this area down here um, this one slight bubbles appearing but nothing too dramatic but that is where these cars rust right now this is my 1983 Yamaha TT 600 and what I think makes this one really special, I saw this for sale, it had come from France, it did compete in events like Dakar or similar events, desert events in period, hence why it's got this great big tank on it. And the TT600 was the most extreme bike. The downside of the TT600, it was only kickstart. And I decided I'm going to do Sand Raiders again. I wanted a bike that was properly period, because you're meant to use period bikes on Sand Raiders, and I wanted it electric start, and I wanted it really light, and this, these are particularly light. So I had this one restored by David Lambert, who just specialises in the Yamaha TT600, but he's very clever and adds electric start to it, and it's way more complicated than you could ever imagine. I also had all this, it's just perfect this bike. Uh, it's quite a tough event, Sand Raiders. You don't want it breaking down. He adds nice little mods, a sort of needle, needle roller bearing in the swinging arm, the super um, trick suspension on it. And this was quite an expensive bike to do to get to this standard. I also returned it to drum brakes on the front. He had a disc brake on the front. That is how it uh, was in 1983. And this, to get it to this standard was about £15,800, which you might think is madness, but I did Sand Raiders, I just press the button and it works and it'll do it again this year and I'm sure it'll be absolutely perfect again. 
It's a terrific thing to ride because it's so light. But I think that is everything in the garage. Yes, it was another expensive year in 2023. I don't really want to add it up all onto one page, but it was certainly over 100,000. But I have one of the fittest Kuntashes here, the fittest Testarossa, the most fantastic little Zagato. I have a perfect uh, Espada. So I don't envisage that sort of cost happening again for several years and certainly not in 2024. I want a much calmer year and I want to use them for trips and that sort of thing. I hope you enjoyed that roundup of what happened with all the cars in here in the Harry's Garage. We did well. Keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.